Hi, welcome to Shuey's Barbecue, where you'll learn the tips and tricks to master your grill. Today, I'm going to be cooking Crackle Kransky. Now, if you do like this video, don't forget, give it the thumbs up, share it with your mates, but the best thing you can do for yourself is hit the subscribe and the bell buttons, and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So, let's get into it. Yep, you heard me right. I'm making crackle kranskis. That's a cheese kransky covered in pork crackle. Now, first off, we're gonna need to get ourselves some pork skin, right? And I tend to try and look for some that has as little as back fat as possible and then all we want to do is take it out of the packet put it on some wire racks and put it in the fridge for at least six hours but i like to leave mine overnight so i'm obviously using a kransky sausage for this i do prefer to choose the cheesy ones because i feel that the cheesy center of the kransky and that hard, salty pork crackle is just a perfect combination. Now, when you're picking them out or at your local deli, butcher or supermarket and they're getting them for you, okay, ask for the straightest ones you can get. They all do tend to have a bit of a curve, but the straighter the, you get, the easier it is, is going to be to wrap that pork skin around them. So we've grabbed the pork skin out of the fridge and it will feel dry to touch and before we put it in and that's what we're after. Now all we need to do is find out the length and the radius to which we've got to cut each piece of pork skin. And how we're going to do that is we're going to using a ruler we're going to measure the length of each kransky Okay, and then using a piece of string, we're going to measure the radius of each kransky, allowing an extra 25 mil for an overlap because the pork skin will shrink during the cooking process. And now we can trim up the pork skin to size. It is best to use a sharp knife or a scalpel for this job. We need to prep the skin surface to help fat escape as it renders down. So I do like to use a jacquard all over the skin. If you don't have a jacquard, use a handful of wooden skewers. Then, using a scalpel and a ruler, slice lines into the skin about five millimeters apart, across the skin. So the cuts will loop around the sausage. And these will be good cut guides when it's cooked. It's now time to bring these two together. And the best option is using some butcher's twine. So what we want to do is cut five to six lengths for each sausage. And we're just going to lay them down nice and evenly and place the skin on top of it. Now, place the sausage down and roll it up as tight as you can and then tie it up starting from the center as it's just a little bit easier to work with and then working your way out to the ends. Do the same to all of the sausages, then lightly oil them and rub some salt into all of the cuts. Really work it in there. I'll be using this rotisserie basket attachment. You can just use a roasting tray if you don't have one though. I do like to oil the basket first. It helps to stop anything sticking to it. Now place the sausages in and clamp them in place with the lid of the basket. Okay, I'm going to be setting up the Weber for high indirect cooking, just like if you were going to be doing a roast. Now what you need to do is get your neighbour to start mowing their lawns and then you want to fill up a chimney starter full of briquettes, light it up, once they're all ashed over, we're going to dump them into two charcoal baskets and we're going to place them on either side of the charcoal grate. Yeah, we want to put a foil tray in between them to catch any of the fat drippings. Add the rotisserie ring, 
and put the lid on and let it warm up a bit. So the Weber is nice and hot now, so we need to get these Crackle Kranskis on. And it's an integral part of the cook, so I recommend now's the time for a drink. So it's as easy as putting the skewer into the rotisserie, turning the motor on, put the lid back on, and make sure all the lid vents are wide open. I'm cooking at a high indirect heat of around 220 degrees Celsius today. Now, the cook's gonna take around about 45 minutes, or for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at a one and a half beer cook. If you want to add the prep time in, you can stretch that out to a two beer cook. Crackle only takes 45 minutes to an hour to form. Now the problem is, is checking on that without lifting the lid. So what I do tend to do is have a sneak peek through that lid vent, using a torch, having a look. Once that crackle's formed, may as well lift the lid, and get those crackle kranskis out, get them out of the basket and throw them on a chopping board. So we have some super crunchy sausages now sitting in front of us. No need to rest these, remember the kranskis were already cooked. So all's left to do is cut that string off and we are going to cut these into bite-sized pieces using those slip marks we made in the skin. So the moment of truth is upon us. What we're after is a super crunchy outer, but a super juicy, cheesy inner. There's only one thing left, is a taste test. This should be illegal. <laughs> We're on to a winner on this one. So the way to getting perfect crispy crackle every time is dry skin, high indirect heat, and not lifting that lid for the first 45 minutes. Do those three things and you are guaranteed the perfect crackle every time. Cheers for watching. And if you do like free stuff, don't forget, jump on my Instagram because that's where all the giveaways are. Cheers. Don't forget, give it the like. Hi. <laughs> and that way, You'll be up. Oh. Now, what I didn't. Uh, that's right, you heard me right. That's right, you heard me right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm going to strangle that bird. Dump them in them. Ugh. Well, it seems like lawnmower guy's back. Hey, I think his lawnmower broke. Nope, it started again. So the web is nice and hot now, and that dog next door is going to get stabbed. Now, if you did like this video, ah.